Welcome to today's show. We're going to be launching a new gear review series, Get Into Gear. Today we talk to Pierre Carter, our hike and fly expert, along with Pierre Pienaar, Cape Union Mark's gear specialist, to find out more about getting the most out of your tracking poles. Stay tuned, you don't want to miss this one. Hi, I'm Pierre Carter from BHE, Between Heaven and Earth, and uh, we run uh, the Expert Challenge and um, Paraglide Kilimanjaro. Hi, I'm Pierre Pina, I'm the gear specialist for Cape Union Mart. I've been around for about 13 years now. My favorite piece of kit uh, has become the tracking pole. Um, my, I did a hike in the Mfalozi Nature Reserve on day two of this five day hike. My knee eventually cashed in all the checks that I, that I uh, gave it over the years, so it just gave in. So I had the choice of actually walking uh, out there with my tracking poles or um, waiting for the lions to come and feed on me. So my tracking poles really have become my best friends. They, uh, I've even named them. One is the Prince and the other one is the Sultan because the extra stability that they gave me, especially with a heavy backpack, they've really become an indispensable part of my hiking kit. So one of the other important gears I find is to use, especially if, you, if you're getting, you, you've got date of birth issues like myself and you're getting long in the tooth, uh, definitely helps your knees eh, on hiking poles. Definitely. Uh, one of my favorite pieces of kit on the mountain, but I've also realized that it's not for everyone. My, I would definitely recommend that you test and use tracking poles before you go. Mm. If you realize that it's not for you, then don't take it. Uh, for most of us, it does help with rhythm. It helps with descent because it absorbs a lot of the shock. Yeah. But if, if you don't use them correctly, they can actually call, cause unnecessary injury. Mm. So let's first start set by, by setting up the tracking pole. As you can see, it folds away really small. And the purpose of this is to put it into your gear bag during transit. You sadly can't take the tracking pole onto the plane with you because it's seen as a weapon. So they fold away nice and small so that you can fit them into the gear bag. Okay, first thing is let's start with this rubber tip. People are under the misconception that this rubber tip is designed to protect the steel tungsten carbide tip here. And that's not the truth. The rubber tip is designed to protect everything else from the steel tip. So if you put the rubber tip on, it won't puncture a hole in your mm. gear bag. Now when you are hiking, take the rubber tip off and put them somewhere in your backpack. Uh, so that would give you better grip yeah. on uneven surfaces. The tracking pole uh, folds up really small. Now the idea here is that we're going to extend the bottom part of the tracking pole all the way to the little stop sign. If you don't use that as your reference, then sadly the markings on the middle part of the stop sign of the tracking pole won't actually uh, align every yes, time. Yeah, yeah. So the general guideline when starting hiking is that if you grab the tracking pole and you're standing on level ground, your elbow should make about a 90 degree angle with the tracking pole. This is just a guideline. As you're hiking, you might realize that a slightly longer or slightly shorter one is more suitable for you. But generally when you go a lot of downhill, make it a bit longer so that you've got that extra stability. And if you're doing a lot of uphill, making it a little bit shorter, yeah, I, I, it's easier to lift. I, I love my hiking poles and I, I generally use a, a 110 or 105 going uphill and then downhill I extend them so I can sure. use it. It takes a bit of practice. It does, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then using it, a lot, a lot of people sort of don't use this properly, I find. I, uh, just correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, Pierre, but and, and they use the top like and then try and push and that you get so tired doing that. I find the best is to put that and just let, let the strap do the work. You see, so you don't have to hold on to it the whole time pumping your arms out. Exactly. And uh, you then just let the strap do the work and you push on that. Let's show that again. Putting your hand in from the top and then grabbing the tracking pole is that very bad. That doesn't work, yeah. Because there's no stability on the strap and if you should trip and fall, the chances of the strap breaking your wrist is quite high. So Pierre, just do that again, hand from the bottom and then grabbing the strap instead of grabbing the pole. And it supports your, uh, your wrist very nicely and the pole. You don't have to, yeah, 
less chance of blistering on your hands and much better stability especially on those long downhills that is the other thing is, is blisters if you're doing a lot of fast trekking over long multiple days i find a a, a gloveless uh, sorry a fingerless glove uh, nice like a like a pair of cycling gloves or a pair of leather gloves and uh, it does stop that blister i get stuck in blisters over here so research has shown that it can take up to 25% of the total weight of every step that you take. And that could easily be between 5 and 10 kilograms on mm. per step on the mountain. So the total amount of steps that you do on the mountain and the total amount of energy that these could absorb if used properly can significantly change the outcome of your expedition. And it's amazing how they stop. If you're just tri tripping and you, or you're twisting your ankle, they actually stop you from, mm -hmm. from going down. Um, and then you obviously get different types. You get ones that uh, don't fold into each other like, well, they do fold into each other, but the mechanism is different. And that's just a personal choice. Um, also folding up for paragliding, uh, you need to put it in your backpack or in your back of your, your gliding harness. Because um, you don't want it to be strapped on the outside. They get in the way when you're taking off. And uh, these might just fit, but you do get shorter ones uh, that are about 300 long. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to find out more about getting the most out of your gear. Have a fantastic week.